So why do we make so many types of shelters? Because there are so many types of survival situations that could come up in the wild, each with their own set of challenges. Making survival shelters is not a one-size-fits-all operation. And here's our two latest designs, quick, simple, effective, starting now. For this first one, we start by harvesting some vine maple. You could use other trees as well, but they have to be green and flexible. We always try to take our cuttings in a way that'll preserve the life of the tree and ensure that it grows back. After your cuttings are ready, it's just as simple as it looks. We're just taking each end and shoving them into the ground. But we're being careful to make sure that each new arch will install a bit shorter than the previous one. We want to taper these arches shorter and shorter as we get closer to where our feet will be, while at the same time leaving enough room for thick insulation. We have no interest in constructing a big, roomy, open, empty shelter with way more air than insulation. We want these shelters packed full. Once the arches are in, we're ready to do some quick weaving. We're just taking the smaller flexible branches and weaving them in and out of our arches. Not only does this add some stability to the frame, but it gives us a better framework for laying down our roof. This includes a couple of long runs on top of the shelter that'll act as a ridge line for shedding water. Now we need insulation. We like to put the majority of our effort into the insulation while constructing the quickest, simplest shelter possible, depending on the scenario. In this setting, our go-to insulators are dry tree moss and gobs of sword fern, which are light, quick drying, water resistant, and incredible insulators. We might as well dump in some of these dry leaves while we're at it. We like to save the moss for laying immediately under us and around us because it insulates so well. Okay, all ready for the roof. In our past two shelter videos, we made a dedicated effort to show that thick layers of sword fern are not only a great insulator, but also very water resistant and great at shedding water, even in steady rain. We've bound together some bundles of sword fern for our door as well, with handles on each side for easy opening and closing. Now we decided to do a quick add-on here because we wanted to have a taller covered porch area separate from our door and sleeping area to sit under while we cook on our fire. We'll throw a roof on a bit later when we get our fire going to do some cooking. Until then, let's get going on our next shelter. We wanted an A-frame style shelter, but again, we're always about quick, simple designs. And we wanted to make a shelter that could be so easily deconstructed and constructed again in another location that we could even classify it as portable. You can see what we have in mind here. We basically want to have two main panels that can just be leaned together and tied in a couple of spots. From there, we'll be able to weave in the walls and lay a roof. But we need cordage, so we grabbed what cordage we could find around us, which turned out to be exactly what we needed. These trailing blackberry vines worked well, and we also threw in some English ivy that we found. We're splitting these cedar roots as well, because we're going to use those for the door and some of our roof work. Now, as easy as this splitting looks, it actually takes a bit of practice and a keen eye to watch that split and carefully keep it in the center of the root as you gently pull. Okay, so far so good. Two main panels leaning, tied, and ready for wall insulation and roof. But first we need to shift our focus back to insulation. Lots of it. Ferns, moss, and leaves to be specific. But the order we lay them in matters. We always lay the sword fern first, up to a couple of feet thick. These ferns are resistant to moisture and they act as a great barrier between us and the ground. At first glance, you may think you should pass on this plant because of the gaps. But when your sword fern is condensed, there quite simply are no gaps. The moss is really our warming layer, so we really pile it up. We position the moss off to the side just a bit to make a place for us to lay, while the moss on our sides insulates us the whole length of our body. We'll add some dead leaves in here as well after we get our walls and roof done. We've woven some cedar limbs through the framework to give us something to lay our fern walls on. These are going on pretty thick, and they're going to be laid in a way that'll shed the rain out to the edges. For the roof of the shelter, we're going to lay more ferns but add a very specific detail. We're tying these bundles together at the stems and then laying them across the ridge of our shelter. This also encourages the rain to run off away from the center of our roof and out to the edges. We've bundled and bounced some more ferns for our door and this makes our shelter complete. Now let's see how easy the framework is to relocate. Pretty easy. Now we're not talking about moving this thing miles or anything. We're just thinking if we found a fishing hole near camp and wanted to move our setup a couple hundred yards closer to the water or something. Okay, two shelters done, now for some real fun. Time to break out the flint and steel. But we're not breaking out any char cloth this evening. Now our char cloth was replaced some time ago by some specific natural uncharred tenders that have proven to be reliable for us in the wild. 
In this case, we're using a processed mugwort stinging nettle combination, and no problem. I can't even tell you how great this fire felt on this cold day. And as I got a chance to kick back and smell the food cooking and watch my old man working around the fire, I was reminded again what an absolute privilege it is to be out in nature making these videos for you all. Hey, if you like this, you can support us just by hitting the like button, subscribing, and sharing this video. Let us know in the comments what you think of these shelter designs. And if you love nature, bushcraft, ethnobotany, and wilderness survival, I highly recommend you subscribe and turn on the notification bell because you definitely don't want to miss what we've got coming up next.